Hello again. A little later tonight, I'll be talking to Margaret, Duchess of Argyle, about her life and times, and amazing times they have been. From being Deb of the Year in the 1930s to being vilified in the most notorious divorce case in history in the 60s, her name's never been far from the front pages. But my first guest tonight is the son of a church minister, honorary senator of the state of Louisiana, deputy sheriff of Davidson County, Tennessee, and has a house next door to Barry Goldwater. And that may sound like the all-American success story. But this man's also been likened to the Marquis de Sade and to Dracula. On stage, he uses the guillotine, the electric chair and the gallows, not to mention burr constrictors, whips and dancing skeletons. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Alice Cooper. <laughs> Please to sit yourself down. Yes. Now, do I call you Alice or <coughs> Ms? Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper. Yes. Not Ms. Cooper. Actually, you can call me Inspector Maurice Scago. That, that's Maurice Snail, isn't it? Yes. No. Uh, do Just you call me Alice. Okay. My mom doesn't call me Alice, but you can call me Alice. What does your mom call you? My mom calls me um, about twice a week. <laughs> Sends me five dollars. <laughs> what does she call you when she calls you? <laughs> no, she calls me Alice. She finally got used to it. She got into a point where she was in between my real name, Vince, Vincent, mm -hmm. and Alice. And so, so she was sort of going, Alice, <laughs> would, could you come over tonight? And I said, oh, could you send me five dollars? <laughs> because we know very well that you're in, you or have been, or are, or were, or used to be, or maybe now even are again into all <coughs> these extraordinary things which I've gone to. Would you describe for me the, the, your dear home life as it as it was? I mean, was it the, were the chintz curtains and your dad's a priest and all that kind of thing? Yeah, I went to church uh, four times a week and things like this, you know. And it got to the point where, when I got to the point where you know I was developed into Alice, mm -hmm. I needed Alice. I really did need to be Alice. You probably need to be another personality, you know. It's good for you because then you don't have nervous breakdown. Well. Uh, uh, so you know, far, you, you really, you, so far, I haven't had a nervous breakdown. But the way this oh, is you going could out. though very yes. easily. Oh, very I've been easy. watching the show. <laughs> very easy. You're in trouble. Very easy. Russell. I think if you're going to have a nervous breakdown, you do what I do, which is shave a lot. You can, <laughs> you clearly don't shave. Yes. No, I just started growing this. Do you like this? Well, like, very much like like Earth is Flynn. not the right word. But it, it, <laughs> You've got a lot of hair down, the, down your cheeks yeah, as well. Yeah, like that. That's nice. Back to your little home. Your father... <coughs> why do you want to know about my home? I, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, exactly. I presume your father had a room in which he wrote his sermons. And no. So, and so, he didn't. No. My father and I are best of friends. He's, he, related very, he really related very much with the kids in the church mm. because he was very hip. Mm. And, uh, and the, actually, the kids in the church really liked him. The older people didn't like him, you know. My dad is sort of like an 50-year-old Alice Cooper. He's sort of a very theatrical preacher. He really is. He's very good, too. I like him. Does he draw the crowds? Yeah, he doesn't wear makeup or anything, you know. But he's, right. very, he's very, very hip. He doesn't wear a shroud or anything? No, like no, 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 no. He's very, you know, I, I can't be disrespectful because my, I really respect what my dad does. Mm. And he respects what I do because he knows that I'm really not a violent person, and I'm really not. The character of Alice is a violent person. No, but wait a minute, Alice, old chap. What I'm saying to you is this. There must have been a day when you knocked on your dad's door and said, I'm, I want to be Alice from here on. No, why would I have to do that? Why? Do you know that this chair squeaks <laughs> very much? It, it only squeaks this. when you move it. If you keep oh. it still, it doesn't squeak on yeah, its own. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I'm nervous. I'm here in Britain when they don't really like me that much. Hi. <laughs> How dare you? You're surrounded by an enormous wealth and deal of affection. Can I be it? honest? Can I really be honest with you? The be very best audiences in Europe were, was at Wembley when we played Wembley here in Liverpool. Honestly, the very best. They were just knocked out. You had and a bit your of... chair still squeaks. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to sit on the floor? I mean, sit on the floor if you want to relax. Um, well, you had a, a, a bit of a row in Munich. Aha. Uh -huh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, Munich has got probably the best-looking girls in the world. Uh, except for London, of course. This part of London. Yes, yeah, so right here in this that's building. Right, that's right. Mm. But um, I don't know what the problem was. They stopped us at the airport. They took our passports away, which is silly. You know, we had 45 people trying to put this production together. And, we had, and they, they were taking our... Because they said we stole some towels. <laughs> 
you know, this is silly. We don't even wash. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it was just such a funny thing, you know, that, that they would take our, that our, our passports away and that we didn't get them back for days. I mean, we couldn't get them. Were you held to ransom then? Yeah, it was one, that was a silly thing. The, the, uh, the hotel actually, what they wanted to do was, since there were 45 people in one hotel, they wanted to get us for an extra day. Which was, you know, a couple thousand dollars, you know, with 45 people. Mm. You know, and, and the way that my crew drinks, that would have been like five thousand dollars. So, I mean, they, they really held us up. Are you yeah. telling me that you float forward on the tide of booze? Oh, me? Not you, you're, no, me? you're the, the, the thing that, that propels so, um, you for. <laughs> Can I just smell no, it? No, I'll this? tell you the truth. I don't. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, go ahead. What is it? That's some. Um... It looks like blood. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not blood. Close. Is it? Uh, but <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, whiskey, Canadian whiskey. You guys still own Canada, don't you? <laughs> no, I guess not. It's, I know what it is. It's mm. Seagram's VO. Mm. Mm. Anyway, am I allowed to say anyway, that? Anyway, you, that, that you, you got a good reception in England. Where did you get the most hostile reception? We didn't. We don't get a hostile reception. That's a funny thing. The people, you know, our, our uh, my reputation sort of precedes me. You know, as far as killing chickens and biting people's heads off and killing babies. I never did that for one thing. You know, I killed Barbie dolls. I didn't like Barbie dolls. <laughs> my sister used to have a Barbie doll. I didn't like my sister that much. So when I was a kid, I used to kill Barbie dolls. But I didn't kill babies. I like babies. Babies are all right. And I never killed chickens. Have you Colonel Sanders kills chickens. I don't kill chickens. <laughs> no, I have a great problem. Do you, um, do, you, do you feel any kind of responsibility to audiences well, no, I, first of all, you know, you were, uh, Norman Jewison on the other show, I don't know if you know, everybody here is supposed to think that we didn't film this in the same night, you know, but well, we did film this on the same we're, night, we're, we're, and we're he was on before us. We're doing it the same night as Norman Jewison did it, because yes. you're, you're, you've kindly jetted in yes. to do this particular conversation, we can't do it any other night, and therefore it's tonight. And, he and said that. something very important about critics that, uh, that really struck home, because I've been saying it for years. I don't really care what the critics say about what I do on stage. It's the audience. See, because I'm an entertainer. I'm not a political person at all. I couldn't care less about politics. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I don't think that far. I read Time Magazine, that's it, you know. Mm. And so, when it comes to just the idea of just, did the audience like it? That's a very important thing to say, because the old entertainment bit is very, very important, you know. Uh, anybody that, any artist that tries to get up on the stage and say something is really silly. Because, you know, what can anybody say that, that, that you don't, don't already know? You know, you know what's wrong and what's right. You know, and then when they get up there and say, oh, save the trees and save the, the water and save all this. That's kind of silly because everybody knows that anyways. But know. at a time when there's a deal of violence rampant everywhere and people are rushing off and doing things, uh, what happens if somebody looks at you and, 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 dis and can't be as bright and as clear and as articulate about his or her reaction? to what he's seeing, and goes off and, and does things that you do in fun? No. It's a very long question. No, you, that, no. Well, well, for one thing, it's a very good question, because it's important to know that the, the, the kids that I play to normally are much smarter than that. You know, they're not dumb at all. The kids that I play to are, are in a media generation. They've been involved in media all their lives. They've grown up with cartoons, Tom and Jerry cutting each other up to pieces, you know, and things like, on cartoons, the most violent thing in the world on television. Alice Cooper's certainly not as violent as Tom and Jerry or anything Shakespeare wrote on, you know, say as far as Macbeth. Pardon me. Either I sat on a mouse or you're... <laughs> we, have a, we still have a squeaky chair. To be very honest, I hate to get this serious. Isn't no, this no, awful? No, it's, no, it's quite interesting because, I mean, you're making a large claim for yourself. Well, you? I am. It's just the fact that, that Alice Cooper never did anything that violent. You know, it was a very silly thing that, that I was... It was just the fact that it was rock and roll. The kids know that I'm not that, vi that, that Alice is a character, and I'm really me. I mean, look at me. You know, how violent am I right now, right? No, the Alice Cooper character is, is a character yeah. that I play, the same way Bella Lugosi played Dracula. Right, right. You know, but I leave him on stage. Right. But I mean, he still never did anything as, as violent as King Lear or, you know, that type of thing. Your, your mummy said that the, the, the way, reason why you'd gone the way you'd gone, that handbag is very offensive. <laughs> uh, the reason um, why you'd gone the way you'd gone is because you watch too much television. Yeah, did my mom say that? Mm. I, Gee, I didn't know that. 
well, listen, this whole generation is into that, you know, is into, listen, I had kids. This is a very funny thing. Remember what I said before about, about kids knowing, being smarter than their parents? It's the fact that, that they actually watched you. I had a 13-year-old, 12-year-old kids come in and say, gee, can I have your autograph? And they're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, you know, that was a great piece of theater. We used 400 lights in the show. And the kid says, you know, that was terrific. But, you know, on that fourth song, the green lighting over here on the right thing. Could, and they were actually technically telling, and they were right. They were, they were technically right. And that comes from watching television and watching shows that, you know, that are technically done well. Mm. You know. And the people that we use in this show are like Broadway people. David Winters and, and Shep Gordon, uh, Joe Gannon, people like that. They're all very, they're, they've won awards, mm. you know, for, for Broadway. Mm. So they know, and the kids know that. And that's an amazing thing. But the parents sit back and go, oh, 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 it's affecting my child is this. You know, and the kids are going, oh, come on. You know, it's just a show. Mm. And that, I think that's encouraging that the kids know that much. You know? Well, you've made that point. Not all parents. I love you. Oh, Will you marry me? <laughs> I can tell she loves me. From that distance? Yeah. Um, America, which t you say has taken you to, to its heart. I mean, I reeled off a list of things that you are at the beginning. You're a senator. Oh, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes. No. I've f even forgotten what the list is. You know, now. as much as I a hate sheriff, politics, deputy. I am a sheriff. And I'm a, you know, I can go out and go, ah, yes, Maurice and Scargill. You're under arrest, of course. Are you an honorary sheriff? Yes, honorary. But do you have any power? See, but I'm on the Bicentennial Committee. I'm on the art, Arts Committee for the Bicentennial. Yeah. I have no idea why. But you mean I, celebrating our defeat, you're talking about? Yes, yes. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. No, I knew it was charming of you, but do go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mom. <laughs> no, it's really, it's just the fact that I really am a very all-American type of person. You know? Well, it's interesting, isn't it, that, that once you, you were not accepted by, by what is now presumably an establishment and that you shot a lot of people, did you shock people because you were... Wait a minute, shocked. Shocked. Oh, I thought you said shot. I was going to say no. no shocked. You shocked a lot of people early on. I'm going back yeah. uh, one or two years now. Yeah. By, by, wearing, by getting into drag and by wearing turquoise... No, 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 wait, no, let's get this straight. Up. I never dressed in drag. Well, you're dressed in, 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 in not trousers and not shirts. No, And not, not things that good, decent American gentlemen dressed in. Oh, no, come on, I saw you last week. <laughs> 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 I wore, I wore uh, no, danskins. Mm -hmm. You know, I looked like I went through a bomb blast. Is what it really looked like. Mm -hmm. I never wore feminine makeup. I always wore more of a mime makeup. That's one thing that people invent about Alice Cooper. You know, uh, the Alice Cooper image has always been preceded by by rumors. I've never gone and drag once on stage. It's always been the type of thing where people would see. In 1966, you have to remember. You know, people were, were into that, that other thing. Yeah. And I was wearing the black thing, and people were going, oh, hey, it's a fag, man. That's a fag. And I said, right, well, well. You know, I you wasn't. Know, I never was. I was always in mime. You, you do know? know a lot of people are going, hooky. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That's, that's called fuff. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you, <laughs> maybe you frighten people and cause them to ask questions about yeah. themselves. You are spending a lot of time defending yourself. I mean, I'm not attacking you. I'm just simply no. eliciting the bits of information. But you're, you're, you're running into a kind of defense. Well, you're not looking at your watch. My entire... Right? Is this a watch? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it is, it's a very... Clear. My entire career has been de uh, on oh. defense, even though the Alice character, the Alice character attitude has always been, who do I have to answer to? This is Alice. The audience likes it. The critics may not like it, but I, I couldn't really care less. Mm. If the critics like it or not, mm. you know, they won't leave because it's it's fun. If you dangle a little tiny thing in front of a baby, I consider the audience a baby. Mm. If you dangle a little tiny diamond thing, they'll go, go like that, you know, and they'll watch it. Like it. The same thing with an audience. So if you put an extravaganza, this this show costs four hundred thousand dollars, you know. To put it in front of the audience, a nine-foot cyclops and four black widow spiders. It's an old Busby Berkeley theory, but it works. People like to see that. They're paying seven dollars to see a show. And what do they see? They don't see, I lost my baby. Oh, I feel so bad. You know, and everybody's going, hey, I'm sure. <laughs> it's good. I like that. 
This time they're going, they're saying, wow, there's, there's the snakes up there and the piles and the pine, that's fine. You know. we, we have a bit of some, some more of you in action, talking of which, dangling things. Take a look at this and wonder what you'd say if your daughter brought this man home for his tea. <laughs> I wouldn't bring me home for tea. <laughs> Not many people have skated across Donny Osmond's face and lived to tell the tale. <laughs> it looks a very slippery surface you're on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. You know, I'll tell you the truth. It's more fun to work live to an audience than it is with videotape, which is yeah. this is, you know. Yeah. And uh, I have much more fun working to an audience because you don't get any reaction back to it to a camera. Yeah. You know, you're, it's very clinical like that. Yeah. When you're to an audience, 20,000 people, you get out there and they go, Rawr! And yeah. you have an enormous power over your, your audience at that point, don't you? I mean, yeah. they, they work up into a frenzy and scream. Well, yeah, you don't go out and see it. The Alice attitude is not that you go out to the audience and go, gee, I hope you like us tonight. Mm. The attitude is, you're going to like me or else. And that's the attitude. That's part of Alice. That's where you have to psych into, you know. And it's you, like a love affair. You take, you, you take it and you grab it. And you shake it, you know, like that. And you say, you're going to love me or, or else. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's part, which is part of the show. Yeah. Well, now look, they do tell me that you learn, if, if you learn one good thing a day, it's been a successful day or a happy day. The image that you have given to me of dangling a, a little diamond in front of a baby's eyes. And that's, then that's the old, there's nothing, there's nothing new about that. It's very interesting to me. In a sense, you see, you, what you've done is allow me to dangle you in front of that lot. Well, yeah, maybe so. And find out one or two interesting things for which I'm very grateful. I've only the... been dangled a few times in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around, That's honey. exciting. Stick yeah. around. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Alice Cooper. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Alice Cooper, we'll be back with you in two minutes to meet Margaret, Duchess of Argyle. Stay tuned. Thank you.